Dudleys, what's going on? Happy Wednesday. Brianne Showman here, physical therapist and performance coach. Get your fixed physical therapy, get your fixed nutrition, CrossFit coach, and a running technique specialist. And I work with you athletes to get you hitting your new PRs in eight to 12 weeks. So I wanted to talk about foam rolling today. Uh, see a lot of posts, talk to a lot of people, see a lot of people in general foam rolling before working out, um, whether it's running, CrossFit, triathlons, you name it, sport. I see people foam rolling all the time. Excuse me. Um, and I'm not saying foam rolling is necessarily a bad thing. It just depends on what your purpose is. If you're foam rolling every day to loosen up tight muscles, you're not necessarily doing anything. Um, okay, so you might be doing a little bit of something, but it's not doing what you want it to be doing. It's not doing anything long-term, which is your ultimate goal of loosening up those muscles. Like you hear me talk about a lot. If you are doing the same thing every single day, you're not doing the right thing to actually address the cause of the problem. But like I said, foam rolling in itself is not a terrible thing. It depends on the purpose. And so that's what I wanted to talk about today on why, when is a really good time to foam roll? So when we're foam rolling, we're not breaking up, like you hear a lot of these things as far as you're breaking up fascia, you're breaking up adhesions, you're breaking up tight muscles. Foam rolling is not going to do that. It's not aggressive enough um, to do a whole lot of like breaking up stuff. What does happen though, the whole theory behind um, why it works is more of a neural response, a proprioceptive response. It works on that nervous system of ours. So what we're doing is basically stimulating the nervous system in order to make things feel looser, make things feel like they're more mobile, make things more extensible. Because of that nerve, um, because of what happens with that nervous system, those nerves in your body, um, to make them move a little or feel more extensible. So that's why when you foam roll, you feel looser um, temporarily. So if you, so why is this? whole theory of this important because if you are going into a workout and you're doing like Olympic lifts, <laughs> hey Brian, <laughs> Olympic lifts, deadlifts, things like that where you actually need tension in your muscles, you don't want to be foam rolling because you don't want that extensibility there. Uh, but if you're going for a run, if you are doing maybe more gymnastics type skills in the CrossFit box, if you're doing something that you don't need a whole lot of tension through those extremities, that you actually need things a little bit looser to move better, <laughs> yeah, Brian, um, then that's when you want to be foam rolling, when you want to get that mobility in there. Um, and so, and then there's also, if you think about, um, you can kind of turn muscles on this way too. So what do I mean here? If you ever watch a sprinter before they get in the blocks, they kind of, you see them like hit their legs and that sort of thing, they're stimulating those nervous systems to turn it on. I do the same thing before squats. I do the same, I like hit my quads, hit my glutes to turn them on, especially before doing heavy squats. I'm stimulating that nervous system. So you can do it and as far as that goes as well. Um, so if you think squats, we don't necessarily want anything under tension like we do deadlifts, um, but we do want to turn those muscles on a little bit. So you can use it for that approach a little bit too, is stimulating um, the fibers in the quads and in the glutes um, for those squats. So things like that for an example. But if you are doing it to actually like feel looser long-term thing, it's gonna help you with that. It's ultimately not benefiting you in that aspect. But for getting things, um, just feeling looser temporarily to help you um, to just feel looser running, feel looser through your gymnastics skills, things like that, that's when you want to be foam rolling. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Hope I didn't confuse you more than what I, uh, than to strain things out. Um, you know, if uh, you have any questions on this, definitely post those on here. If you've heard something completely different than what I've learned, I would love to hear that as well. Feel free to put any comments on here. Uh, same thoughts with dynamic. Yes, I am much more of a fan of dynamic stretching than I am static stretching before working out. Brian, you are 100% correct there. Um, just getting things moving, getting things loosened up. Hold your static stretching till after workouts are done. That way you can, um, that's usually better type of warm up or better type of cool down. So dynamic stretching before, static stretching afterwards um, is my ten typical rule of thumb. Um, yeah, great question there, Brian. If you guys have any other questions regarding stretching, foam rolling, anything like that, definitely post those on here. And like I said, feel free to put any comments on here if you've heard something different um, than what I've learned. I'm happy to 
look into other things as well. So um, if you have any specific questions for me, feel free to reach out to me on Facebook Messenger. I'd be happy to have a conversation with you as well that way. Thank you, Brian, for hopping on. Thank you, everyone else, for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.